Yvette, please. CC. Yvette. Where's Dom? I had him call you. Why? I'm gonna cut right to the chase. My brother is deeply in love with you. And I'm ready to put our differences aside if you are. Really? On a string. I'm, I'm with it. Team Freak. Team Freak. All right, so if you're gonna be down with the team, I gotta show you the dap. Oh, the dap? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, like this. Oh. One, two, three, shoot, shoot. swish. Swish. Yeah. Again. Like. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> One, two, three, swish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like that. Cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> After months of fighting, my girlfriend and sister, well, I, I'm talking about my girlfriend in the game, so if my actual girlfriend's watching this, you know, you know what I mean. All jokes aside, though, these two finally stopped. Now, everything is going to happen between Vic, my sister, Vic, and my wife. Well, Vic and my wife are actually on a good note. So less drama off the court, the better it will be for me on the court. And so far here against the Milwaukee Bucks, we're off to a good start. I'm even here, reading their offensive plays. I get a steal, and a one-handed dunk on the other way. And that's how you make... These guys have a really good team. Like, I was actually sitting down the other day and thinking about some of the teams in the East that's going to give my team, the Washington Wizards, some problems. And, you know, the Miami Heat are getting better. Obviously, no-brainer, Cleveland Cavaliers. But the Milwaukee Bucks? These guys might be a problem in the playoffs. So we're playing them here. This is the last game of the regular season. And the funny thing is, after this is when the playoffs will start. And obviously, the news that occurred in the last episode is that my GM will be letting go of me. So after this season, we will be becoming a free agent. Here's Henson with a second remaining. Puts that shot up. That was well defended. Stucky pushes the ball up to me. With no hesitation. I'm going up for the layup. Count the basket and the foul. His standing reach is actually three and a half inches greater finding holes in this defense. And no doubt the defense had better play a little tighter. Freak. And right away, they match it with a three-pointer of their own. They hit off for him, guys, with more than a few steals over the course of the ball game. They have a Trying to cross up Michael Carter. Look at that layup. So far today, I'm having a big day. And here's Freak. 20 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, again, Mihimni cutting to the basket, credits me with another assist. Jabari Parker back from his injury, and he just got his soul stuff right there by George Hill, and I'm there. Another way to get yet another big dunk. So I got subbed out of the game, and I did not get any playing time in the fourth quarter. We ended up losing this one 117 to 105. Before we started our next game against the Miami Heat, the word got out there. Well, I'm not really focused on the future right now. You know, I'm just taking things one step at a time, believing that it'll all work out in the end. But right now, I'm just focused on being the best team that I could be. We are officially in our first game of the playoffs. As you guys saw earlier, the Pacers basically gave up on me. And it all had to do with the off-the-court distractions. So this is kind of an awkward game because it's the first game of the playoffs and we know that we're going to become a free agent. All I can do is keep playing and building a resume. Solomon Hill right here. A beautifully drawn play. He knocks down a three-pointer. And check this out. The Miami Heat have Dwayne Wade playing point guard. So here's what happened. I didn't get to play the entire fourth quarter. I checked into the game and 
They are in double overtime. You guys see the Miami Heat are up by two. So we had a foul Dragic. And now he's headed to the free throw line. He makes his first one. And with that second free throw, with 4.9 seconds remaining, we definitely need a three-pointer right here. And that was straight up desperation. Maybe we could have found a better look, but we have lost our first game against the Miami Heat. I know money isn't everything to you, Freak. And I find it hard to say this, but I've grown to respect that in you. You're a man of conviction. But it's my responsibility to point out the consequences of that way of thinking. Now, for you, winning is everything. But winning isn't something you could do alone. It requires excellent or, at the very least, competent coaching, contributing teammates, and God-willing good health. And we all know that's not a guarantee. Now, the reality is you're not in control of any of those other factors. But if you, as the star player, fail to win and deliver a championship, you will be held responsible. You will be scapegoated, you will be villainized, and you will be punished accordingly. So when you say to me that as a free agent, all you care about is being in the best position to win, I understand what you mean. But again, that's not only up to you. Now, I'm going to call my guy at Apollo Jets. I'm going to get us a private plane for this tour. I promise you, you're going to love the free agency experience. Now, your relationship with Vic has unfortunately cost us in some of these negotiations. We had 10 teams interested. We now only have three. But thankfully, thankfully, you wised up when it came to Vic. Have you been in contact with Vic? Yo, freak, look at me. He still has one of my cars, Dom. What did I tell you about the L word? The L word? What is this? Loyalty. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what kind of hold this Vic has over you, but it makes me scared. You're a free agent for the first time in your career, and the only person you need to be loyal to is you. You need to be an FOF. You need to be a friend of Freak. Let's forget about winning without appropriate compensation and loyalty that hasn't been earned and isn't deserved. This is a tough business, Freak. We need to be tougher. Come on. Cece? Woo, Lord Jesus, I was about to blow a gasket. <sighs> okay, Freak. Now, there are our very few options on the table, and I want you to explore them all before making your final decision. Whatever you decide, it needs to be an informed decision, not an emotional one. The larger the markets, the greater resources at your disposal and exposure for you. But if you don't allocate these resources properly, then it's just a big spotlight on you as you lose. Well, thank you kindly, big sis. She's right, Freak. Thanks, Don. Absolutely. Team Freak. That's what we're about. Oh, whoa, I don't know if I like this. What? what? Dom and CC high-fiving like that? I mean, yeah, why you got so certain I'm gonna lose? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No one thinks you're going to lose, Freak. You guys sure sound like it. We just want you to select a franchise that has great coaching, super talent, exposure, but most importantly, a ton of cap space. If the team doesn't win and you're to blame, at least you won't be broke, capiche? Capiche. Also, you should make sure it's somewhere you want to raise a family, but no pressure. Mm. <laughs> well, you guys have made this decision so much easier. What did mom and dad say? You know what they said. I mean, but honestly, I'm torn. I've heard and listened to what you've all had to say. Don't take this the wrong way. There's just one person I haven't heard from, and that's Vic. Oh, Lord, help us. Yo, Vic, where you at? I've been trying to call you, man. Hit me back. You know him. He's probably somewhere too loud to hear his phone. I don't know. I think Vic's actually upset with me. Now, I didn't even know this, but you only play one game in the playoffs. Right after that Miami Heat game, we became a free agent. And here are all the teams that are interested in me. There's a lot of teams. But one team that I wanted to go to was the Miami Heat, the New York Knicks, and the Brooklyn Nets. I'm just trying to go to a team that needs a point guard. Even though Miami doesn't really need a point guard, I just want to play on a team that has so much depth like them. I've never done in my career where I went to the Heat. So this is definitely a place that I want to go to. So right now, I'm going to ask for more minutes. They're giving me 11 minutes per game. That's not a lot. New York is giving me a lot. 17 minutes per game. But that's not really a place that I want to go to. Brooklyn Nets. I don't know. I was kind of iffy about it. Right now, I believe they have... Jared Jack and Shane Larkin so for all these three teams I'm gonna go ahead and ask for more minutes but 
I think I've already decided where I want to go to. So let's just move to the next round and see if these teams will actually give me more minutes. So here's round two of three. And what do you know it? The only team that gave me more minutes was the Miami Heat. 12 minutes isn't a lot, but I'm willing to work for more minutes and get to be the starting point guard of the Miami Heat. All right. Hello. Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today. I'd especially like to thank God, my Lord and Savior, my family, my agent, Mr. Don Pagnotti, twin sister and manager, Cece. My lady, thank you guys for all your support. I'd also like to thank all the fans um, and all the people out there who consider themselves an FOF, a friend of free. My free agency has been nothing short of amazing. And frankly, it has been a dream come true. But like most dreams, the reality is very different from what I imagined. Though I wouldn't change a thing about this period and the time I spent in the NBA, I can honestly say that nothing has been more gratifying and more difficult than choosing where to play next year. I sought the wise counsel of my loved ones. Nothing puts me at ease more than knowing that regardless of my decision, you guys will be there for me no matter what. Now, there are so many wonderful teams in the league, each filled with stellar talent and all vying to be number one. For me, there's nothing more important than winning and surrounding myself with those who feel just as passionately about the game as I do and have an unrelenting desire to win a championship ring. That's what matters most to me. It's for this reason I've decided to take my talents to South Beach, Miami Heat. Championship this year. You think so? <laughs> and you know what that means? I'm gonna get cha-ching. <laughs> I love it. I know. That's my man. All right. All right, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Three letters. M A X. Dom, we trust, baby. Dom, we trust. Let me see this contract. Let me see this contract. Gotta call me right back. I gotta call finally. Oh my Yo, fool, where you been? I've been trying to call you. Mr. Freak. Yo, who's this? This is Officer Vasquez with the Ninth Precinct. Officer Vasquez. What did Vic do now? Mr. Freak, there's been an accident. Look, we're gonna need you to come down to the following address as soon as possible. What kind of accident? Put Vic on the phone. I can't do that, sir. No, 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 you're not hearing me. I wanna talk to Vic. Look, sir, we need you to come down as soon as you can. No, 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 hey, hey, hey listen, listen, on? listen, listen, listen. Oh, Put listen. down the phone, and I don't wanna hear it get picked up until Victor Van Leer's Wait, on the phone. the phone. Put Vic on the phone. Mr. Freak, Mr. Van Leer was killed in a car accident. What's going on? Give me the phone. The car he no. was driving was registered to you. We were able no. to identify him from the Listen flyers to me. the session. Freak, I don't want to talk to you no more. Freak, give me the phone. <sighs> hi, excuse me. Hi. Yes. This is Cece. This is Freak's manager. Who am I speaking with? Hi. Yes. Look, we're going to need somebody to come down and identify Mr. Van Leer. Uh, eyewitnesses say that he was involved in a car chase. Two cars were chasing him, and as the chase escalated, he eventually lost control and crashed. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Hello. Outside of the deceased, was anybody else injured? Vic died in a car accident. What? Yeah, they said he was in a car chase. Please, see. No. Freak, Are I'm you sorry. Sure? He died. Oh, I'm so sorry, Frank. Frank, I am so sorry. Cece? Cece. Hey! Why are you sneaking up on us? Yeah. We thought you two left town yesterday after the funeral. Baby. We decided to stay one more day. Oh, I'm so glad you did. I wish we had known you were coming. We would have made you something to eat. Yes. Okay. What y'all doing? Yeah, chatting. Yeah, talking about yesterday's service. Oh, okay. How you holding up, son? You know what? I'm okay, Pops. 
But you know what? We love you too so much. And it's only now that I'm realizing how much you two sacrificed for Cece and myself. Hey, you know Vic didn't really get to know his father growing up. And we were lucky to grow up in a household with two loving parents. So, and you know what's sad to say? People thought we had a highly unusual home in a project. Yeah, folks always talk about the negative effects of boys with no father in a home, but it affects girls too. And it's helped me in my relationships with men in my life. What men? Anywho, I know that all men are not dogs because I had a great father in the home. You, Daddy. I was there, too. He didn't do it alone now. Right. <laughs> yes, Mama, of course. <laughs> it goes without saying. Thank you, daughter. I did what my father did, and his father, and his father before that. A man, a real man, will always be involved in his children's lives. I love your mother. We had our ups and downs but I love her more than life itself. You two are a direct result of that true love. Yeah, we know that. Switching subjects. Yeah. I know the both of you like I know the back of my hand. You said you were leaving after the service. Why are you here out of the blue? Yeah, what's up? Why I gotta be all that? Yeah, we can't stop by and show our love and appreciation for right. our loving parents. I'm highly offended. I am appalled. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, come clean. <sighs> okay, okay. Me and Cece just want to give you a little present. Yeah, a small token, a small repayment for everything you've done for yeah, us. Yeah, all the sacrifices you've made. And we want nothing in return but your love mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Uh, but get married first. <laughs> yeah, save your money. But, Daddy, we really just But, Daddy, nothing. You heard your father. Well, maybe, maybe one, one day. day. <laughs> maybe. But one day is not today. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, for real, for real, we do have an actual flight to catch tonight. For real, this yes, yes, yes. Okay. for real this time. <laughs> well, it's so, good to see you again. Uh, okay. yes, Love you, too. Hey, y'all call us when you get there, okay? Well, we as soon as you yeah. land. Love you. Okay, mama. All right. Yeah, y'all okay, call mama. us as soon as you get back. All right, as soon as you land. All right, yes, promise, course. promise. Take care of your brother. Of course, always. I got this. No trust. <laughs> wow. Hey, did you forget something? Uh, no, can you do me a favor and head to the sofa? The sofa? Well, what's at the sofa? Just look behind the cushion. Behind the cushion? Uh, Pete, come here. What do they want now? What's in the envelope? Just look inside, Mama. Pete, you open it. Hey, Frequency, what's this? Does it look like it opens doors? Keys to a house? Uh-huh. A new home? Uh-huh. Son, now I didn't told you and your sister a million times. Me and your mother mm -hmm. are very comfortable yes, right where we are. Yes, absolutely right. This is yeah. Harlem, USA. Project or no project, this is our apartment. This is the home we made for you to raise you up right in. We're not moving like everybody mm -hmm. else. Let me talk Tell to him. Tell him something. Frequency, we both appreciate it very much. I mean, we, we're very uh, grateful. Uh, okay, can you, look, there's something else in the envelope. P, he says look inside the envelope. What? Well, look inside. Yeah. Oh, hey, don't hey. Montego Bay, Jamaica. <gasps> Baby, pack your bags. We are living the dream. <laughs> oh. Thank y'all. Love you. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Dear Freak, <laughs> by the time you read this letter, I'll be long gone. I wrote this letter because it's the only way I think my voice will ever be heard. This piece of yellow paper it's the only way I'll ever get any of you to stop, listen, and really get to know me, Victor Van Leer. My childhood was turbulent, but even in the most unsettling times, there was a break in the tide. My father was the rocky water, and my mom's was the gentle surf. Pops did a lot of foolish stuff, but when he wasn't trashed and was actually taking the time to be a father, he'd say, Vic, you got one life, a fragile life. God can take this life whenever he sees fit. So live and live plentifully. Each day God gives, live it in abundance. My pops was a smart dude, the most dangerous kind, educated and street smart. And this apple didn't fall too far from the tree. My mom's, yo, she was an angel. No matter how heavy the hand, she would do anything for me. And by chance, when I was casted into that darkness, 
She was the voice I followed back to the light. I was so young, too young. But my decaying flesh carries the scars and memories that won't fade. She's the reason I'm as loving as I was. She taught me to look at others as human beings and not objects. Now, whether it's pain, a simple kiss, hug, or I love you, could disperse that rainy day. That's why I'll, that's why I'll never understand why. Why? Why she of all people was taken from me. The only one good thing I ever had in my life. And that was my mother. You ever feel lonely? Well, I didn't have any siblings. And no one would claim me as their own. And it's the first time in my life I even I question the point of living at all. If it wasn't for your family taking me in, I swear I was going to open my wrist or jump in front of the A train. But I found love. And I found it through my new family. Mr. P, man, he was the complete opposite of who my dad was. He was foreign to me. He was a good, honorable man, and to be honest, he intimidated me. I didn't believe I could ever be the man he tried teaching me to be. Miss Martha, damn. <laughs> Real talk, I was in love with that woman. Freak, if you're reading this right now, I'm sorry. I never met one hottie that came close to her. Mr. Peter's a lucky dude, but unlike my dad, he could recognize the angel in his presence. Aside from my own mom, she's the only other person I truly think understood me. I just wanted to be loved, yo. I just wanted to belong. CC, man, I've seen her make the hardest dudes break at the wrist. I've seen her turn coal into diamonds and then back into coal again, just by doing this intense stare she do. CC is no joke. I love her, though. We used to be close. And again, I'm sorry, freak, but when your sister get all mad and on one, damn, I just... Whew. CC, I love you more than you will ever know. I hope in my time past you can finally forgive me. Yvette is beautiful. A woman about success, work ethic, and never settling for less. Which, that's why I didn't stand a chance. Freak was king, and me, a big, fat zero. She was cool, though. Chill. And when she wasn't being all uptight, that girl was mad funny. I could see why you fell in love with her. She could make any man better. She was exactly what I wanted, and definitely what you needed. Frequency vibrations, my boy, my blood. I'm sorry I couldn't be as great as you. I'm sorry I was your weight and not your pedestal. I wanted to be a lot of things. I thought I was the next prodigy. Then you hit that court, and I knew. It was it. It was you, freak. It was you. I didn't have much of a life, at least not one I could be proud of. I never said this to you, but I wanted to be you. All I wanted was a taste, just a little taste of everything I never had. Can you blame me? Like my dad said, Life is short, and I just wanted to live it abundantly. I know it hurts, but your life would be better without me. There's nothing holding you down anymore, freak. I believe in you. 
And I'll always look out for you from above, B. Hey, bring that Jesus piece back for your boy, though. You know, that shuttle's work. I love you, freak. At least I did something right. At the end, I felt as though I had no place here anymore. I never felt as though I belonged. Maybe, maybe my greatness is in the heavens. Or maybe, just maybe, my greatness is you, freak. I just hope you and the fam remember me as I remember my mom. Look at people like human beings, not objects. Because if you wait, it's often too late. So just say you love them now, man. Be the voice they can follow out of darkness. Be to them what my mother was to me. Angel. Your boy, resting in power. <laughs>